You are listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast brought to you by Birmingham Live. Hello, welcome to Claret and Blue. My name's Dan Rowan. I'm joined for the first time in ages, it feels like, Ash, for a match preview because John usually does these, but I'm stepping into the hot seat this afternoon for this one to talk about Unai Emery's latest press conference ahead of the Wolves game. Before we get into that though, Ash, how are you? How's things? I'm all right, I'm not, I've just got back from the press, to be fair. Traffic's wild out there. Obviously, mm. Bank Holiday coming up, so traffic's yeah. mental. But just got back. Some good news on the on the team news front, Down, we'll, we'll go through that in a minute. But yeah, all's well. Four, four games to go. Will them at Europe? I think it's in a shootout now. We probably top them for that, mm. that seventh seventh spot. So, all to play for. A lot of excitement with these last four games. Wolves always want to beat us as well. So, we'll have got to be at it tomorrow. For a few weeks ago, I thought Villa would get to sixth. <laughs> Maybe he's slipping away a little bit as the weeks go by. I yeah. still think we'll finish in the top seven above Spurs. Yeah, I mentioned in the whatever episode we did in the week about the Wolves game, how it kind of be in their cup final and how they yeah. they want to bounce back from the 6 0 defeat. Mm. And I remember he was asked about that as well, uh, about kind of them being a wounded animal or not. And we'll, we'll try and answer that question ourselves as well. But let's get straight into it then with the presser and the overall vibe from this afternoon. I have watched the last few match previews that you and, and, you and John have done, and you would mention about the food. So I was the food this yeah sandwiches and muffins again so I do nice. my pre-run diet no no good Dan so I'll be, yeah I'll be flagging it come ten, the 10k mark on Sunday when we do the run I'll be thinking I had too many sandwiches at the bottom on Friday I'm, I'm, I'm paying for them now so yeah usual top group there fuel us up and then um and yeah that down to business I mean, a seven-game month in April must have done no no favors for your for your waistline with the body more food no uh, the presser itself then, we'll leave the kind of injury update and stuff um, for the kind of next segment of the show with the, the players returning from injury. What was the, the vibe like from Emery ahead of this kind of four-game shootout, if you like? Yeah, he's uh, yeah, he was asked about whether Villa need to win all four, but he, he set two targets now. He wants Villa to go into the Tottenham game next week, knowing if, if they win that, they can leave, go above Tottenham. Mm. And that'd be massive for, for his side. And then if it's all on Brighton in the last game, the Villa to secure European football, a shootout almost, it'll take it. He said it'd be fantastic. So um, there'll, be, there'll be two home games as well. Mm. I'm sure the crowd will be pumped up next week for the Tottenham game. Huge game, that one. And then he, want, he wants he wants something on the last game of the season. He wants to go into the Brighton game needing to win. He, he'll, he'll snap your hand off for you, that, that for you now. So he set two targets in, in that sense. So, but what they need to do, they need to get a result tomorrow. To make sure that's on course, so um, yeah, fascinating stuff from his presser. That's an int- interesting way of wording, actually, about being in the game, being in the kind of scenario mm-hmm. for the Spurs game because we're level on points, aren't we, at the moment with Spurs? And I think it's just exactly. goal difference that separates us. So we're all talking about Wolves being a must-win tomorrow, and I do feel that, that is is the case. Say if we do lose tomorrow, but Spurs also lose whatever their fixture is this weekend. Palace at home. We- we'd still go into next week's game against Spurs level and having to beat them to go into it. So it exactly. almost kind of relieves a little bit of pressure. Obviously, you don't want to lose to Wolves at all. But you think, well, if Spurs lose as well, Villa haven't lost ground and then the game against Spurs still means something. Mm. Obviously, you lose the weekend and Spurs win. It's kind of over already. So it's a must win in that sense. And you, you don't want to be relying on other people famously. Um, as we saw with Man United and Brighton on, what was it, Thursday night? Typical. Man United, man, beat us and then typical. lose to Brighton. It's absolutely typical, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, you can't you can't rely on favourites from anywhere else. And you know your your league position is the is the the, the result of thirty eight games. This is an obvious way of looking at it. You do, you end up where you deserve to be. If you, if you quite if you fall short with four games to go, it's that's you know, that's the overall kind of narrative of the season. You just win the. Oh, what would we have been like if we'd got rid of Stephen Gerrard a couple of games earlier? But that's all in the past. Yes. Um, yeah, kind of a mini four-game shootout then. Must win is what it feels like tomorrow. It does. Is, is that the kind of vibe you get as well from the, yeah, like, inside the camp? Yeah, just keep th- keep things alive still. Um, mm. A lot of emphasis on tomorrow. Um, once Villas have more control of the ball, he's using the Man U defeat and the Brentford one. Mentioned that he wasn't happy with the Brentford either. Mm. Last two away games, Dan, he mentioned sorting out the away form. He's kind of hinted Villa have gone back to the, 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 yeah. the, the ways away from home. So he wants to sort that out. More control tomorrow. We want to dominate in it possession against the side that will be will be quite n- nervy after a six 0 defeat going into the in front of playing in front of their home fans. They're good at home wolves though, so yeah, yeah um, big reaction needed tomorrow. Some interesting stuff as well, Dan. Obviously about the the director of football, it's looking looking like you know you know Emery basically confirmed it as well. Uh, Matteo Alimani is a person with experiences. He has worked at high level, and he, if he's coming here because it is a possibility. It will be it will be a very good opportunity. Create a, a strong structure with him. So, 
pretty much nailed on now. Yeah. Again, those kind of things, managers never even talk about players and stuff to that until it's, until it's properly confirmed. So for me to even mention it in, yeah. in that capacity and the way you've mentioned it there is... Yeah, he wouldn't be saying those things if it wasn't going to happen. Me and John did an episode yesterday about you know, who is he. Mm. It's interesting, actually, since I posted that, we said it was Matteo Alaman, is, mm. is what the kind of pronunciation we were told from Luis Miguel Echegaray, which I've got to pronounce that as well. Yeah. And since then, someone on social media has tweeted us back and said, listening to the pod, love it as ever. Quick note, though, the Y in Alaman isn't silent, which is what we said, and yeah. it also isn't Alamani either. The NY is like an N with the squiggle on the top, whatever that's called. So imagine saying Espanol, but don't say the O. I live in Spain. My girlfriend is a Catalan speaker. So it's like Alemania, uh, which reminds me of French lessons. I'm pretty sure that's the French word for Germany. So that's how I pronounce it now. <laughs> Matteo Alemania. Alemania. That kind of... Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. For that to be mentioned in the press conference kind of yeah, confirms that that will happen. We knew that he was leaving Barcelona. All yeah. signs pointed and all the noise pointed to a, an Aston Villa appointment in the summer. The kind of speculation from the podcast we did, because he's still involved with Barcelona through the summer transfer window in a, an yeah. advisory capacity or, or whatever the, the official phrasing of it is, people are almost setting themselves up to think, well, he won't have a hand in any Aston Villa transfers until the January window. Can you shed any light on that? Because I, I fail to see how he leaves Barcelona in the summer and isn't, I mean, whether officially he's allowed to work on deals for Aston Villa, probably not. But if he's not already at least thinking about Aston Villa, with Unai Emery, I'd be absolutely amazed. Of course, yeah. They're still on in the, the final details. I was briefed that um, earlier today. So, yeah, the, the I's need to be dotted, the T's need to be crossed. I, I'm, I'm, his official start date, I, I, I presume it'd be July 1st. I think his Barcelona contract expires June 30. Okay, mm. he's, got, he's got to have a handy handing over period there. But yeah, like you say, Dan, you'd be amazed if he's coming in and not being able to, to, to weave his magic in this summer transfer window. So, yeah. He'll he'll be in sooner rather than later for sure. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, the injury update section of the show over the last few weeks has been about thirty seconds long because we can just say, well, it's the same as last week. No change. Kamara, Coutinho, Cash, and Bailey are all yeah. nowhere near. Still onwards we go with the same eleven, twelve, thirteen players. But there's fresh news, Ash. Explain all, please. Fantastic news, according to Emery. Uh, fantastic. Mm. So yeah, we had Coutinho trying with the group on Monday. He's he's missed the last eleven. So. Coutinho is probably ahead of most at the moment. He, he, he trained with the group on Monday. Kamara and Bailey, they joined the group two days later on Wednesday. So they've had, they've, they've had a couple of sessions with, with the main group uh, this week as well. And Matty Cash was back involved yesterday. So all four are in contention to nice. be in the squad tomorrow. He's asked about whether they can start or from, from the start. It'd be a tough ask. So we will analyse the 24 hours before the match if they are to play. And if, they, if they're on the bench, they'll, 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 be, they'll be fit enough to, 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 to feature. I'm struggling to see if any any will start. Given mm. given given it's a derby, you have got to be at it. Coutinho having eleven games, the last eleven or twelve games missed out. There will be some rust there from all of them. So yeah, looking looking for the lineup, I think it might be as you were. We might as well go straight into predicted eleven because again, this segment in, in recent weeks has been short because it's just, again same old same old. The yeah. start eleven that's been playing will play again. You would imagine. I, I don't see any of those four coming back and being match fit from day one. Coutinho yeah. is obviously going to be the closest because he's trained for the longest, but he's, unless I'm mistaken, he's missed the most out of those exactly. four as well. So yeah, yeah. again, that kind of evens out the, the training period. Again, like you said, for, so you've got to be up for a derby. Balls have got a great record at home. It's going to be a physical affair. It is a derby. The atmosphere, they've got to bounce back from a 6-0 defeat. We're bouncing back from the Man United defeat. It feels like a must win for both parties in different senses that Wolves won't want to lose to us and won't want to have consecutive defeats and, and want to show up and Villa need to win to keep European dreams alive. So to throw a Coutinho in after 12, 12 matches missed or cash for six mass- matches missed or, yeah. or whatever it is. I mean, if Emery thinks that's the right thing to do, we, I'll back his decision because it, he, he's kind of God at the moment, what he says goes. Yeah. But you'd be surprised if any of those came in from the start. But having those, having even one of those options on the bench is is an improvement on recent weeks, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. We've had a couple of kids on the bench, Travis Patterson, uh, hmm. a couple of keepers on the bench. So, yeah, we need more options there, um, for sure. Another thing from the press, Dan, as well. I've seen this earlier in the week. Colombia have obviously called up John Duran for their under-20 hmm. World Cup, a uh, prestigious event, the under-20 World Cup. They've named him in their 25-man squad list. Bear in mind, the first group game um, comes a day after, or day before the Liverpool game. So, it's... Later this month, Villa have still got games. Colombia won him over in Argentina for their World Cup. But Emery's put a block on it. He's going to keep him, which is probably, 
obvious, really, isn't it? Given the lack of options we have, we have up front. So, John Duran won't be going to the the Under Twenty World Cup, despite being named in, in, in the selection list. So, he's keeping him. Yeah, spoke to about I spoke to Runo about John Duran. How he th- th- think he's getting on? A lot of frustration there if you're watching him closely. He's he's kicking out of players. He's coming on late in games. He's just struggling for any momentum at the moment. But yeah, Henry said he's still still very very young. He's a it's a work mm-hmm. in progress with, with John Duran. And yes, there's still that raw aspect to him. So maybe one for the future, you know, look, looking at it, give, given all the transfer rooms we've seen for a new number nine, maybe Duran's one for the future. So hopefully he can have a big side with four games to go. Come on, come off the bench and make an impact. But, uh, but yeah, Emery's working closely with Duran uh, in, in these final few weeks and he'll have all the pre-season with him as well. So I'm intrigued mm-hmm. how that develops. So it's a difficult one, isn't that, for a player personally to be called up to a, an international squad and not be able mm-hmm. to, to make it and travel and be a part of it. Mm-hmm. Because the flip side of it is, what is he going to do for Villa? If Ollie Watkins is fit, he might get thirty minutes for the rest of the season. Not you yeah. know, not just tomorrow. It might you know, might get five minutes here, ten minutes there, and offer nothing in terms of goals and assists. And think, well, I wish I'd gone to Colombia. I wish I'd been allowed to go. Yeah. The flip side of that, from Emery's point of view and Villa's point of view, is if Ollie Watkins is injured tomorrow, but who plays up front for the there final three games? Like Duran has to play, whether he's kind of ready or not. Yeah. Um, so yeah, from a, a selfish club point of view, you have to keep hold of your players at this stage of a season when there's still so much to play for. If Villa yeah. were going to finish thirteenth, guaranteed, and couldn't do any better, you'd go off. Okay, you know, if we have to play Brendier up front for a game, we'll have to do that. Duran, yeah. go and get some experience, kind of thing, get some minutes. Yeah, um, yeah, I've got no problem with that personally. John, John Duran might not be best pleased with it, but. If he comes off the bench against Liverpool and scores the winner, I'm sure he won't mind, will he? There you go. Quite a short preview because, again, there's not much to say at this point of the season, apart from like the wider picture. You know, If we lose tomorrow, it's kind of game over for the season to an extent, as long as, as, as Spurs lose as well. It still goes on for another week, but you yeah, know, yeah. it's kind of do or die mentality now. Mm-hmm. From a Wolves perspective, perspective losing 6-0 to Brighton last week, again, could have done with them doing a favour <laughs> for us last week. Oh, no. Wolves. How do you think they'll bounce back from that? Is that kind of the wounded animal returning home and kind of tails between the legs and, and just try and not concede tomorrow and make it difficult for Villa? Or will they want to come out and prove a point and go, that was a blip. We want to go and take the game to Villa and, and batter them. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be the latter there. Than what you've just said, they want to come out and, and pump us, basically. Their manager have, a, have them fired up. The, the fans hate Villa as well. They, they want to get, get one over on the rivals. Yeah, it's all set up. For, it should be a really good game. You know, really good atmosphere. Two sides wanting to win. Um, for different reasons. So, okay, Wolves' your season has petered out. Okay, they're not not mathematically safe yet, but given given what happened last week, they're going to they're going to they're run through Wolves tomorrow, and Villa need to stand up to that. Big test of character, character for Villa tomorrow, off the back of the Man U results. I think Villa have, Villa have been too great in, in recent weeks. I think the Fulham game they were pretty poor as well. I won't say yeah. poor; they got the job done. It was comfortable, but it wasn't the rip roaring Villa we've seen against Newcastle previously. So. I think Villa need to bounce back. I think McGinn said that in an in-house interview. He said, we've been a bit flat of late. Did, 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 didn't perform how we wanted against Man- Manchester United. So, like you say, Emery, Emery's will call for a reaction. And they'll, they'll need to play well tomorrow, Villa, if they are to get get, get the win. Wolves would mm-hmm. love, Wolves would love, love nothing more than to spoil Villa's European dreams. And yeah. that, that'll be the carrot for them. So, yeah, big, big game tomorrow. It be, should be some, some atmosphere as well. I'm sure their home record was something like six wins in eight at one side. Yeah, I don't know what it, is, what it is quite now. I'm just looking at the last three. Mm. Palace 2-0, Brentford 2-0, and Chelsea 1-0. So not high-scoring affairs, but three clean sheets at home, back-to-back. You'd think Solid. that first goal tomorrow is is key, isn't it? If Villa go ahead early on, you'd back Villa to go on and finish the job. If Wolves take a lead, you'd be thinking, they keep clean sheets at home. Yes, Villa, up until last week, always score. But they didn't score last week, so again, you'd just be a little bit nervy, and there is that pressure on the game. Yeah, the overall kind of bigger picture, like we said, is is as long as we match Spurs' results, it goes into mm. next week. If Spurs are winning and we lose, it's kind of game over. So yeah, massive, massive game for for Villa this week and the kind of overall European race. Let's go away from match day then and talk about a, a personal kind of challenge for us, rather than Aston Villa for it a little bit. Oh dear, the half marathon. So uh, there's a link that will flash up on. Uh, and in the comments and on, on the YouTube description where you can go and donate to our fundraiser. Uh, I'll also put it on screen as well, where we are doing the Great Birmingham Run on May the 7th, so after the Wolves game. Uh, we've currently raised £505 of an 1874 uh, goal. I never thought we'd reach that, but it was a good number. I honestly thought 500 quid would be yeah, a good goal, so I'm really yeah. happy with that. If you want to go and donate and, and uh, keep that figure rising, that would be lovely. 
Now, originally in August, we signed up for the half marathon. I've since backed out to the 10K because I bottled it for a <laughs> knee injury and <laughs> I was basically doing no running at all. You and Pat are both doing, Pat formerly of the Clark Blue podcast, both doing the half marathon still. I saw yesterday on an email from them about like, the route. You must have got it as well. Yeah. And uh, it, you know, the, the 10K and the half marathon is the same route until a certain point. And there's a yep. decision point, they call it, which I think is about eight kilometers. So if you sign oh. up for the half marathon, you can kind of like run. I think it's a roundabout and you kind of go back on yourself. So the half marathon carries straight ahead. <laughs> the 10K go back on themselves. So if you kind of don't fancy the half marathon, you can kind of go on this decision point and, and finish early. Um, that would be tempting, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like that that moment where it's like this is like the do or die. You've got to carry on to the end, or you can finish here. Like, yeah. I'd be thinking, oh, I want to finish here, man. Get me a couple um, points here. Yeah, I went through my like running numbers. So we, like I said, we joined, uh, signed up in August, and I said, yeah, I'm going to do the half marathon. I knew I was having a baby at that point, so I don't know where I thought the time was going to come for for training. But I did 44 kilometers in August, 49 in September, 31 in November, 10 in December. 2.5 in January, 4.5 in Feb, 22 in March, 18 in April, and 8 in May so far. My last run before Sunday was this afternoon. Just did a nice, gentle three or four kilometer, three and a half, I think it was. Um, so I'm not ready for it at all, even the 10K. The half marathon, I thought at one point, I've got problems with my knee. I've not been running. If I do it, I'm going to cause myself a mischief. I'll regret yeah. it. I didn't want to back out entirely because I said I was going to do it. So I'll do the 10K. No, I've not run a 10K. For probably four or five months so even that's going to be not going to be easy um do you feel ready for the half marathon no no i slacked yeah. off this last week I had the football writers awards wednesday night oh, i yeah. one one too many with gary shaw so i'm blaming gary shaw for that one <laughs> meant to go out yesterday didn't but um i've done 34 runs this year so i'm averaging two a week um i tend to average i do 10k every time i go okay 12 12k kind of thing I've never done a 21k, which is a half marathon. So I think I've, I've done the, the perimeter around Sutton Park, that those in Sutton Colford, and the, the Sutton Park is 12k all the way mm-hmm. around. So I've done that before. And the thought of doing that again for a half marathon is. Yeah. So yeah, I've, I've got to just psych myself up. I'll be okay. I mean, I'm running twice a week, but it's just that distance. Mm-hmm. So I, th- I think I think 12k would be fine. It's I think it's that final 10k, that f- final 5k. I've got. Tomorrow, twenty minutes. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm aiming for the under under two hour mark. From what I've heard, it is a massive mentality thing, even for the ten k. Once yeah. you get even that decision point, I think it's eight k for that. You, you're still thinking, Christ, like it's still another two k. Like it's a, yeah. a quarter of what I've done left. Like it's still it's a big ask. Whatever you're doing, and, and a lot of respect to the people that are doing it because it, it isn't easy. Whichever whichever version of the run you do, even the 10K is difficult is what I'm claiming. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the half marathon is a, is a massive effort. I know that Ash, um, Ash, sorry, Pat has done a 21K. He sent it into our group chat. Um, yeah, yeah. He, he'd done like a, a, a mock run, I guess, of the 21 and he said he got to like uh, 17K or something and thought about throwing himself in the canal because he just couldn't face <laughs> finish it. So it is a big mentality thing to get, to get over the finish line. Mm-hmm. I'll be doing the 10K, of course. So I'll finish before both of you unless I have an absolute disaster. Um, if I finish the 10K in under an hour, I'd say that was a good result for me yeah. from my, my recent pace. So I'll be there hopefully at the finish line to see you two cross it and we'll have a beer after it and, yeah. and hopefully continue to raise a little bit of money as well. So yeah, nice big plug there for the half marathon on Sunday. The donation link is below. So if you want to drop a five out, ten out, whatever you can afford. I know times are tough, but we'd greatly appreciate it. It's four, I should clarify. And we've got T-shirts. 50% goes to the Aston Villa Foundation. So we've got a T-shirt here. Uh, with supporting our own on the back there. The run I did today was in one of these, not this one though. Uh, and Acorns as, as well, 50% goes to them. T-shirts for them as well and vests were sent to me and you and Pat. So let's uh, end the match preview then with the prediction segment. And we've said a few times throughout this show that it feels like a must win. Are we nailing our colours to the mast and, and putting our necks on the line and saying it's a, it will be a Villa win? Very tough, very tough game tomorrow. But I think I think the could, the, Villa could send a statement out again off the back of couple of below par showings of late. I think, yeah, 2-0 Villa. I'm going to go with Wolves are on the beach, as it were. I think, yeah, we've seen that at Brighton last week. Okay, the, the, I think I'm, I'm expecting a fast start from Wolves. They'll come out. I think Villa will soak it up. Villa are much more tactically aware now under Emery. Mm. Um, they don't rush rush possession. They don't panic. And I think Villa, Villa will be too clever for them tomorrow. Uh, 2-0 Villa, Watkins and Buendia. No, I was going to say Brendier to bag tomorrow. Uh, like we said, it'll probably be the, the same team. So I'd, not, I'd like to see Watkins on the score sheet after a, a couple without scoring. 
I think Wolves will score, but I'll, I'll, I've got to back Villa to win to keep the streak going. So let's go two one Villa um, and, and keep the fight going for for Spurs next week. And That's when we're doing game. this show this time next week, if we have beat Wolves. Let's say Spurs drop points to Palace. Mm-hmm. That's a massive, massive game next week. Probably the biggest of the season. And yeah, yeah. you're thinking if we win that, and I'm getting ahead of myself here, you almost want that Brighton game not to mean anything because Spurs have kind of fallen off a cliff. That'd be nice. We'll be nice. Um, but yeah, let's back Villa for a strong end to the season. Uh, Ash, thanks for joining me for the post-presser chat. Um, we'll be doing a post-match show for the Wolves game tomorrow. I think it's John jumping on with me uh, full-time. Uh, probably a late one though, 6, uh, 7, 8 p.m., something like that. So stay subscribed to the Clamp Blue channel to see that first. We'll get our running shoes on for Sunday, which you'll be hearing plenty about. We've been doing like a little video diary kind of thing as well, so we'll do a video from Sunday as well. There's like putting ourselves with the paces on the day that'll be a tough watch in the edit I'm sure um, yeah thanks everyone for watching and tuning in as always we'll see you again tomorrow cheers, Ash. cheers thank you for listening to Claret and Blue and Aston Villa podcast if you enjoyed today's episode then please do let us know we love hearing your thoughts and comments we'll be back soon with another episode but until then up the villa up the villa